Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our uh, webinar, our live event for this e-twinning learning event that is going on these days. My name is Anna Laguinha, and I am one of the moderators on this learning event, together with Viola Pinzi, who is not appearing on screen at the moment, but uh, she's going to say a few words uh, in a minute to introduce the CoLab project. So what has, it been, has been going on in these uh, two weeks together? We have been talking. Here is Viola. Hello, Viola. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining. We have been talking about how to, collab uh, to facilitate collaboration in our classrooms. And the approach has been mainly from theory to practice. So we have tried to give you, um, first of all, an introduction on uh, what real collaboration is uh, and how to distinguish it from cooperation, for example. And then we also uh, analyzed how to make a collaboration easier uh, for our students to make it efficient and interdependent. But before we start, uh, I would like to introduce uh, the two speakers that uh, tonight are going to share with us their experience of teaching and learning, collaborative teaching and learning in their own classrooms. We've got Diana Stolfa from Croatia. Hello, Diana. And Elena Balestrazzi from Italy. Hello, Elena. Hello, everybody. And thank you very much for being here with us this afternoon, all right? Uh, so they are going uh, to, uh, uh, to talk about their own experience later on, halfway this webinar. Before that, so I would like, uh, I would ask uh, both Elena and Diana to mute their mics, uh, please. And uh, I would like, uh, um, uh, I'm giving the floor now to Viola. Viola is uh, the CoLab project, project manager and uh, she will go to, uh, she will introduce us, uh, say just a few words to make you understand what the CoLab project was because um, it was obviously connected to a MOOC, but not only to that, it was a broader project. What can you say about it, Viola? Thank you for being here. Uh, I cannot hear you, Viola. Uh, is it possible that... Uh, Hi. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. okay. So, welcome yes. everybody and thank you, Anna, for this nice introduction. Welcome to the learning event webinar, as Anna mentioned. I'm Viola Pinti and I work at European Schoolnet. Uh, we are the coordinator of the COLAB project, which stands for Collaborative Education Lab, as you can see in the slides. And the project was uh, is founded, co-founded by the European Commission in the Erasmus Pulse project. And we have been working now for more than two years. As Anna mentioned at the beginning, the project is about to end, but we created a, a lot of resources and activity within within the, these two years. So the project was uh, coordinated by European Schoolnet together with six national partners from uh, Poland, Estonia, Ireland, Belgium, Austria, and Portugal. You can see them here. Uh, the, some of them are Ministry of Education, some are training organization and research institutes. At a national level, all the activities involved uh, many schools, secondary, primary, and also some vocational schools, teacher training organizations, so organizations provided training for teachers such as us, and also some other public authorities and, and universities. And uh, what we did uh, in the project was beginning to try to uh, find a, an approach to collaborative learning, so to define what was the, our approach to collaborative learning. And you will hear and you've been hearing during the learning event about this, uh, this key definition. So for us, collaborative learning uh, is a learner center approach, first and for all. And it implies working together, but also a common goal. It fosters uh, a wide set of skills uh, in, in, in pupils and learners, also in us and teachers and trainers, such as positive interdependence, individual accountability, and so on and so forth. And mostly also we uh, all define the difference between cooperative learning and cooperation uh, being, um, and collaboration, uh, apologies, uh, where collaborative learning uh, implies that all the, the tasks and the activities are tackled together in a coordinated effort. And you can find more information on all these uh, aspects we, we work with during the project, also in the COLA MOOC, as Anna mentioned, which is uh, still available on the European Schoolnet Academy. 
um, maybe Anna will present a few uh, slides about the MOOC per se, and it is not live anymore in the sense that there's no certification available at the moment, but all the material and all the videos and, and resources are still there. And uh, as I mentioned, within, within the project, uh, we uh, created and developed a set of, of learning resources for, for educators, but also for policymakers and for, for ourselves. Uh, we have uh, some collaborative learning scenarios. You may have seen some of them during the, the learning event. And also a set of assessment guidelines that Anna presented in the, in the module four, where you can uh, find information on how to assess collaborative learning and also some example of tools, such as rubric and checklist. Then, uh, as I mentioned, we created this online uh, course within the UN uh, Academy um, with the MOOC. And within the MOOC, there are many videos also presenting teacher experience and, and experts' uh, suggestions. And then we had a national level some um, testing experience. So we had uh, some schools experimenting with the models or collab with the learning scenarios. And we uh, collect all the feedback from uh, our colleagues and teachers and school at national level to uh, develop further also the scenarios to improve all, all the materials. So somehow this learning event is also for us a very uh, nice opportunity to wrap with these uh, training processes and with these uh, many activities developed within the project. Uh, so uh, thank you all once more for, for being here with us today and I will uh, uh, give the floor back to Anna to, to start with the, the content of the, of the webinar. All right, thank you so much Viola for this uh, nice introduction. Uh, it was very important for us to understand, I think, that the CoLab uh, is not simply... Um, I cannot see my presentation, actually. Can you see it? No. Uh, so, uh, the, 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 can you see it? Um, I'll try again. I'll try again. Something okay. apparently did not work. And uh, that the CoLab was not simply a course for teachers, but it was a, a, a broader event, a very important event in, involving many countries and, uh, and enhancing um, collaborative teaching and learning. I'll take the PDF. See, sometimes it happens with the, pres with the PowerPoint that they don't work. See if it, this one works. Viola, uh, I cannot see. Yeah, here it is. All right, um, making it a bit bigger. Um, sorry for these uh, technical issues. Uh, okay, so the learning event and also the, the MOOC were focused on teaching teachers, showing teachers how to uh, uh, enhance collaborative working uh, work in the classroom. Okay, so understand the real uh, meaning of uh, collaboration, because as Professor um, as Professor Deidre, Deidre Butler well explained, sometimes we misunderstand. We think that just putting kids together, having them work in groups, uh, means uh, having them collaborate, which is not actually authentic collaboration. And uh, so throughout the MOOC, uh, we had four modules, but during the learning event, we tried to concentrate the, to uh, summarize the content, so we had just the three uh, modules. If you are any way interested in uh, learning more about collaboration among teachers, of course, m m most of you are also e twinners. That means that you are collaborators already in nature per se. But anyway, the the materials of the uh, the MOOC are all available online. You just enroll for free, and you can access all the materials and videos. The experts on the course who you might have come to uh, know throughout the learning event were essentially Professor Luis Valente, who helped us a lot as regards especially the assessment of collaborative work, which we all know as, as teachers is one of the main challenges in the classroom. And Professor Deidre Butler, who gave us also a very interesting um, workflow and some questions to reflect uh, upon. Caroline Kearney was the course uh, coordinator uh, for the MOOC. Uh, the collaboration was key anyway in the whole uh, MOOC, uh, in the whole course, also as regards the experts and the contribution by teachers. So uh, there was a pool of six teachers, me among them, 
uh, but Rayan Gunesh, Krisa from uh, Greece, Valentina from uh, Bulgaria, uh, Monica from Italy, and Antonio from uh, Portugal. They contributed, and me myself also contributed a video to show what they actually uh, did do or have done in their own classroom. And this was much appreciated by everybody because it showed really practice, hands-on practice in the classroom and not only theory, theoretical pedagogy, which is obviously very interesting. But then as a teacher, of course, I need to know what to do in the classroom. OK, uh, so uh, the first module, as you uh, as we have seen together also in the learning event, was about the true quality, the authentic authentic quality of collaborative learning okay so and the main benefits for our students um, we focused on the difference between uh, cooperative and collaborative learning okay meaning that in collaboration the students not only are they at the center of the learning process but uh, they make decisions on what uh, to learn they make decisions also on how to learn and they, the teacher facilitates the discussions. The final product is determined by the group and the decisions that are make, made by the group are interdependent. Do you remember this term, interdependent? That means that they are all working together to reach the same goal. Whereas cooperative uh, work can mean also that they work maybe at a certain stage together, but then their work separates and they may also finish the project on their own, or they can do part of the project of the research on their own, but the final out outcome is not uh, the same, not common for the whole group. So we reflected and, and uh, Ishka complained about the difficult, difficulty of the task that we uh, offered you throughout the learning event uh, about the reasons why, the benefits, uh, why we should insist and we should uh, persist, uh, persuade also sometimes our students that it is important to learn how to collaborate and how to collaborate efficiently. If we look at this picture, you can see very young kids uh, who one day will have to face important challenges uh, and solve problems that don't exist yet, maybe, because uh, we don't have the technologies to solve these problems or uh, because one day they may be doing a, a job that has not been invented yet. So we are trying as teachers to prepare our students for the future. And to face these challenges, they will need a lot of uh, competences, not mainly knowledge, notions, but also competences, among which also collaboration, the capacity to work together to reach the main goal, the, the, the same goal, and to uh, create a, new, a solution, to find a solution, to give support each other, to follow a vision. Okay, so the 21st century skills that we uh, should also always bear in mind are the four C's, communication, sharing thoughts, questions, ideas and solutions, collaboration, working together to reach a goal, but also putting expertise and smarts, all types of intelligence, the different talents that our kids can have, put them all together and, and take the best of each of us. And critical thinking, looking at problems in a new way and linking learning across subjects and disciplines. This can be sometimes a dream, but uh, we are e-twinners, so we know that uh, uh, through e-twinning, these uh, objectives become a bit easier because the projects that are done, uh, carried out through e-twinning, are very often cr cross-curricular. And creativity, that means not only creating something, but also finding new approaches, new ways, so that is innovation and invention. That is what our kids will um, need in the future. So what is collaborative learning and what skills, what specific skills does it foster? So it contributes to the development of leadership competences, self-evaluation, listening skills, presentation skills, persuasion, negotiation, teamwork and skills. So these are also called life skills or social skills. Uh, if you remember, during the, the, the learning event, we presented all these slides and Deirdre Butler, she is a professor at uh, Dublin College in Ireland. Uh, she posed uh, these questions for us to uh, reflect upon. 
So what are our students actually doing when we put them to working groups? Are they actually working together? Are they giving each other feedback? Have they shared responsibility? Are they actually making substantive decisions? Are they working interdependently? And she also used this image of a, you know, a boat and the kids rowing on the same boat to reach the, the same goal. Okay, this is the workflow that she suggested in order to, uh, to see whether the activities that we are, we are creating for our kids are high level uh, collaboration or low level collaboration. So what are the main challenges of collaborative, uh, uh, co cooperative learning in the classrooms? And what do we do as teachers to help our kids collaborate effective, effectively? These are the main challenges for our teachers. And um, we also asked you, these are the results of the poll that we um, asked you to answer during the second module of our learning event. And here you can see uh, what are some of the uh, challenges that you teachers on the learning event uh, uh, have uh, encountered so far. So setting up a group, mixed ability, how to divide the kids uh, and um, implementing collaborative learning in the classroom. Many say that the noise element is a problem and that it is difficult to guarantee the quality of the collaboration by all groups. And in designing and implementing group work in your classroom, you have you might have encountered other types of issues. For example, and the, most of, our, of you have said, have mentioned, the time is always too tight. We don't have time enough uh, to uh, to do these activities in the classroom. So this is a common issue for everybody. So what are the main challenges of cooperative learning? Uh, the last one uh, maybe is the most uh, uh, relevant to most of us. So how to assess group work if it is done in groups, but also how to keep the kids concentrated, focused on their job, on their task. Okay. So what can we do? Here are a few answers. Our role, main role, is to design activities for our students. So instead of explaining so much lecture style in the classroom uh, in a driven way, okay, by the, driven by the teacher, uh, better if you if we design activities that are engaging and uh, promote um, active learning. Uh, PBL, project-based learning or inquiry-based learning and web quests can be a nice way to start. Uh, what is uh, essential is to plan well. Plan well is important. We always need a plan B and consider the major issues that we might uh, face in the classroom, but also how to share, to distribute the time that we have uh, available uh, in order to uh, have the kids work on different competences. I'll show you that in a minute and consider various forms of groups, set clear rules, explain objectives, assign rules, okay? So um, during the, um, the MOOC, as well as the learning event, the collaborative learning scenarios were introduced as one of the uh, ways that we can use as teachers in order to plan well the activities to be done in the classroom. So seven steps to plan a learning scenario. I have read many of your comments on the Padlets and most of you have appreciated these learning scenarios. I have to say myself that it had a great impact on the way that I uh, teach now. I'll show you in a minute how uh, one of my lesson plans and uh, especially the dream, explore and ma ma map and make. Okay, These um, steps are very important for me. A presentation was normal because it is uh, really the, the, the show after the, the, the work done by the students. But uh, as for me, the, the dream and the map uh, stages were very interesting. And I keep on using this, uh, this, um, this pattern, these seven steps to plan my activities. Another important, um, uh, important tool that I'm going to show you uh, tonight is the learning designer. We did not introduce it uh, during the learning event, but I'm sure that many of you know it already and have used it many times. It is very interesting and very um, um, in encouraging for collaboration, not only because of the planning options, 
but also because it encourages, it can encourage collaboration among uh, uh, teachers. Okay, so I'm stop. I'm stopping this uh, presentation and trying to share my screen now. Let's see if I am uh, lucky with all these uh, uh, technicalities. I hope that you can see my screen now. This is uh, uh, the uh, the learning designer. Unfortunately, while I am presenting, I cannot see the chat. So uh, maybe uh, Viola, you're going to help me. This is how you can open uh, um, an account, okay, on the Learning Designer, and uh, you can log in from from here. I have already opened one of my Learning Designers. It appears like that when it is a uh, when it is uh, finished, okay. And here you can select the blocks. These are called the learning blocks. As you can see, each of these blocks uh, is identified, uh, in my case, with a dream, explore, and map. Okay. And you can move uh, here and see uh, the, whole, the whole construction, the whole project. So make. In this case, the lesson plan was about making the world, the, your home, a better place. And uh, it encouraged discussion among students in order to uh, research ideas and make a post, a leaflet or a video on how to make the quality of living in their own community better. Okay, So it is very in interesting because you can divide the learning um, activity in different units and dedicate one of these uh, to the different uh, competences. These competences uh, correspond to the the um, uh, sorry, I'm showing that here to the uh, Bloom taxonomy application comprehension knowledge synthesis. Okay, here you can uh, add uh, your learning goals. And what is particularly interesting is the spy chart. Uh, if you hover your <clears throat> your uh, mouse over it you can see how you have allocated time. For example, in this case, 18% to collaboration, discussion, inquiry, practice, etc. So you've got an immediate uh, idea on what uh, activities the kids will be doing. Okay, uh, This was one. And another one, the pursuit of happiness. This is a PBL, pretty long, uh, uh, pretty long project, uh, PBL scenario. You can also um, see see how the, the activities are better distributed in, in, in here. The collaboration, for example, is 25% of the whole time uh, allotted to this uh, project. And uh, you can also see the project in a different view. So this is more tight. It is more tidy, maybe more clear. So investigate, as you can see, uh, part two, uh, another investigate, make ask, remake, uh, and show, okay? And uh, also here on the right-hand side, you can, uh, you've got this color coding, which helps you understand how you have uh, distributed all the activities. It is a very nice tool also because you can um, download it in PDF or Word, and you can export it. That is, copy this link, which I am copying now, and I will share it with you also in the chat. So if you want to have a look, you can. Okay, you can send this link and share it anywhere. And uh, anybody who has the link uh, can then turn the editing on option. That means that you can use my uh, pro you know, my project and you can um, edit it, make some changes according to your exigencies. Or even better, if you are preparing a project, um, maybe an e-twinning project or an Erasmus Plus project, you can send the link to the colleague. The co colleague can edit it and add some more items, activities, questions, uh, or multimedia resources and share it back to you. And you can keep your own version and make a new one, adding, editing, continue editing, what you want to do. And uh, it is nice also because you can, as you can see here, for example, um, in this uh, session, uh, I, I wanted the kids to ask for expertise for, from a local newspaper journalist or an actor from the local theatre theater, theater academy, and uh, a resource is attached. So if, you, if I click on this resource, it leads me to the website where the kids uh, can have a look uh, 
okay and uh, and do uh, yeah this was a task actually and they could uh, uh, answer uh, about happiness or help from the expert and what on whatever okay so this is the learning designer and I think it is um, yeah very very nice um, um, very nice tool okay so i hope uh, uh i'm changing again to my presentation now um here yeah. let's see if it works if there are any questions anyway uh please use the chat viola is going to help me because uh, i was not directly connected to the chat so i couldn't see if there are any questions uh, all right, so that is about uh, the learning designer. Uh, what matters to me and uh, my experience is to let the kids be creative. C creativity is also a uh, top com competence uh, according to the uh, uh, Bloom taxonomy. It's the peak of the pyramid. Okay, why creativity? Because it is, in my opinion, but not only in my opinion, as, as you can see, this guy here, uh, thought of that way before me. Creativity is intelligence having fun. Creativity is also contagious. You can pass it on and the more you use it, this is also very interesting because if we share an apple, I give a, a, a half an apple to Viola, we both have half an apple and not a whole apple anymore. But if we share ideas, I've got an idea and Viola has another idea, we end up both having two ideas each. So that's the beauty. Uh, of, of it all, of creativity, that the more you use it and the more you develop it, okay? And once you stop learning, you start dying. So uh, this is also a very nice um, saying, in my opinion. So uh, that the main tip that comes from the CoLab project, the CoLab MOOC and the learning event, as well as my own experience, is to make that step back get the, the students to collaborate, to work all together, use also technology, uh, teach them that working in a team and working together is an enrichment to us all, makes us all achieve something more, and uh, also encourage them to learn and have fun while they work together. Okay, so uh, I hope it was clear enough. If there are any questions, I will be very pleased to answer. Uh, now or later as you prefer. And now I'm going to give the floor to Elena Balestrazzi. Elena is a, an English teacher. So um, Viola, can you give Elena the presenters, um, the presenter right? Because I cannot see her ear here at the moment. Elena, are you there? Hello, Helena. Yes, here I am. Yeah, you see me? Yeah. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Elena, can you also please uh, click again on your web, uh, webcam and also click yeah. on your image, right? Uh, okay. On both, so that your webcam starts. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, so hello, everybody. Okay, here is uh, the beginning of my presentation. I'm a teacher in Italy of English and I teach in a secondary school. Last year I attended uh, the collab and it was a really, I have to say, a turning point in my life uh, because it was uh, so inspirational. So I started proposing many activities uh, based on our collaborative work uh, and uh, now I'm very happy with it and also my students have found uh, new motivations uh, for school. So. Let's have a look. This is my experience of a few weeks ago, and um, it all started, uh, okay, with uh, a new issue, a current issue, which is a bioethic. Uh, bioethic, why? Because, uh, first of all, I wanted to transform a traditional lesson into something uh, more collaborative, uh, uh, just because I wanted to apply the principles learned at uh, the first uh, collab course. Uh, then uh, I wanted also to develop the use of IC tools. Uh, so. What was the occasion? It was uh, uh, just a very traditional lesson based uh, on um, 
the syllabus liter of literature in which I had to present Mary Shelley's uh, masterpiece, uh, Frankenstein. And uh, so in order to um, involve the students, uh, I also uh, tried uh, to explore the world of uh, bioethics. Uh, so in this case, uh, the novel that was written 200 years ago, next year, uh, was appreciated in another way. How did I do it? Uh, very simple. The first step is uh, in nine steps, as you will see. The first step is to motivate the students. Uh, how to motivate them? For example, uh, the different topics uh, I will show you later, which they are exactly, uh, were posed as a question of real life. Uh, indeed, uh, for example, in Italy, probably, we will have soon a referendum about uh, the living will. So the question asked uh, to students was, uh, what would you vote for in case of a referendum? And uh, later on, I uh, prepared the group activity like this. First of all, team building, but as uh, we as teachers uh, uh, all have the same problems. Uh, we don't have uh, uh, to waste the time uh, preparing uh, group activities. So that's why I prepared uh, a table with a list of topics, uh, li the list of uh, students, and with a simple activity of drag and drop, you can form groups. Uh, um, you can prearrange groups, uh, you can invite the students uh, to form uh, groups in a different way, but in this case, I let uh, them free. So they just found out the, the schoolmate they preferred. Here is another tool for free, which is Padlet. I suppose everybody already knows it. Usually we use it as a repository, but in this case I used it as an interactive tool because these are the seven, eight different topics to be analyzed. And by means of Padlet, every group could book the issue they wanted to, uh, to explore uh, by means of Padlet. So they knew that another group, for example, was already working on it. Um, what uh, the, the third step is to explore. So changing from a traditional lesson text based uh, to uh, an innovative lesson based on collaborative wor um, work, it means to explore the world because they had the, the web in their hands. As a consequence, very high skills are required because they have to take into consideration so many different websites with authentic language as a consequence an operation of skimming and, scan and scanning of the text that was needed. Not only. The task was clear. Indeed, Anna before said that you have to be very clear for the task. And in this case, it was to create a document, a multimedia document, that should be used by the other members by the, of the class in order to understand, to know something more about the topic chosen. So uh, the problem was not only to understand, but also to produce, to create a project which could be easily appreciated, understood by the rest of the class. So um, uh, the following step, of course, is collaboration. And now, thanks to new technologies, it's much easier than in the past. I dedicated some lessons to this activity, but most of the work was done at home thanks to Google Drive and to other tools, for example, Crazy, because also Crazy can be used remotely. And so it was quite easy to do it. Um, OK, Google Drive, of course, the teacher should be um, part of uh, the sharing activity because the should, uh, teacher should monitor from a distance uh, what the students are doing. Because later on, if uh, we um, intervene later, the project is already finished and probably they have to do it again. So it's much better to be part of the group anyway, also to keep the students on track because they have to, to be focused on the task assigned. What are the tools available? So many. 
uh, most of the students already use a crazy PowerPoints or a, a Google Slide, whatever, but uh, they also like experimenting in new tools, like uh, not really too, uh, new, but innovative, like uh, in maze, go animate, uh, whatever. Uh, so this is another important point, communication. Communication, because um, students, uh, when they have prepared their project, they have to present it uh, to the rest of the class uh, in terms, which means uh, that their work is interdependent. Uh, they didn't assemble simply work done one by one, but everybody had to be coherent to the same choices, to the same style. Not only they made uh, what uh, Anna called before substantive decisions, they were completely free to choose the content and to choose the graphical layout. Um, then uh, what? Uh, Padlet uh, is used uh, as uh, a repository and so the different projects uh, were posted here and they were at the student's uh, um, disposal anytime, anywhere. So they, this was uh, the new, new material for them to study on. Uh, these are some examples of the slides that they prepared because it's very important also to be able to present them um, with uh, certain criteria. For example, images should support the idea, the text should be very short, etc., etc. And then uh, the rubric. The rubric was given in advance to students. And uh, you see, uh, it didn't include the simply content and language, but uh, uh, also creativity and uh, design and communication skills. Communication skills in particular is important because it's not uh, simply checking uh, the student's fluency or accuracy about the language. It's also, it also includes uh, um, the, the ability to see if the student was able to transmit his message to be effective, to have an impact on the audience. So using also body language, eye contact, interaction with the rest of the class. And as you can see from uh, um, this rubric, uh, the value uh, the scoring assigned, uh, assigned to this part uh, is uh, the same as uh, the language. Uh, of course, uh, the rubric uh, was given to students in advance. Then uh, uh, another point is a formative assessment. As uh, each student uh, had all the material at it, uh, it, uh, his own disposal, how can the teacher check if they really understood uh, uh, the new information given by the other students? by Kahoot. Kahoot, which was, by the way, made by each group, because each group pre um, presented some questions and also multiple choice answers to check the other students' uh, uh, new knowledge. What about another tool, Word Cloud, with uh, some uh, keywords uh, to be discussed uh, uh, in the classroom? And then another very important moment, which is a step nine, the debate. Debate in which the class has uh, the bioethic uh, um, uh, topic was uh, so important uh, and uh, uh, interesting for them, they started uh, these uh, class uh, debates uh, and they were really involved. How to do it uh, in a more challenging way? Uh, for example, with uh, an uh, online poll, both at the beginning of the discussion and at the end of it. So they can also check if uh, somebody changed uh, his mind uh, or if a group was, uh, for example, more convincing than the other. So it, it's part of the game. Uh, then uh, we have uh, going back to normal because the schools are all the same. After the formative assessment, uh, possible through Kahoot uh, and uh, Word Cloud, uh, a summative uh, assessment is needed. As a consequence, uh, we can use uh, the marking provided by the student's uh, presentation of the multimedia project or a very traditional written test based on open questions about uh, the topics uh, um, presented. 
Last point, uh, according to uh, the principles uh, uh, that were exposed during the collab, it was uh, sharing. Sharing, why? Because uh, students usually prepare wonderful projects, but they still are inside the school walls. So the idea for the future, and I can see that uh, especially in the USA, many schools are doing it, uh, it um, uh, it would be better to share it also outside uh, the class, uh, inside of the school, for example, with families, or also putting it uh, on uh, social media, on the net. Uh, so this is an example of how to motivate the students to give life uh, to something uh, that was uh, so traditional, uh, such as uh, the novel by Mary Shelley, because now for them uh, it is uh, the novel that started uh, uh, the sort of uh, um, reflection about bioethics, and it was another occasion occasion for them to, commun to put into practice uh, to um, their communication skills uh, and also to deal with uh, current affairs, current issues, uh, like uh, I told you before. But most of all, I have to say that the role of the of the teacher was uh, the one uh, simply of a facilitator and the uh, teacher. Uh, have to abandon their central role uh, of instructors or any way to be the center of the lesson and let the student free to do it. So this was uh, my experiment and uh, um, students were very happy with it. I hope next year we'll involve also other teachers, especially science, philosophy and religion, because I think, as Anna said before, that being able to share and uh, to work together is uh, the key of the future. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much for this uh, very interesting presentation. I hope that you can hear me. Uh, yes, I can. Yeah, it was really very interesting. And uh, I really had the, the, the sensation that you uh, took me, uh, that you took us in your classroom uh, and showed yes. us uh, your uh, yeah your experience so uh, very nice to hear as well that uh, uh, yeah that thanks to the book uh, and the ideas that you learned that you came to learn together with us uh, changed the, your teaching style this is very much appreciated so thank you so Absolutely. much Elena there are thank some you. questions actually uh, but we are going to uh, talk about it uh, at the end. I'm just reading it aloud so that maybe you can start thinking. Uh, somebody is asking, uh, Nicoletta, for example, she's also an English teacher, and she's asking, how do you do it then if you have to teach grammar? Grammar is essentially non very collaborative, but uh, if you start doing collaborative uh, PBL, for example, then you have to teach grammar in the traditional way, and how can you proceed then with the collaborative learning? But we're going to come back to that later on. Later. Yes. Okay. Uh, so please mute your mic. Elena, now okay. is, uh, um, is uh, Diane, Diana a turn. So, Diana, I'm giving you the floor. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Yeah. Yes, start also. Start your webcam, please, Diana. Yes, Click it twice on your image. Can you see? Uh, there, yes, here it is. So, uh, Diana is uh, Diana is from Croatia. Please introduce yourself, Diana, and uh, involve us into your world, into your project. Thank you. Well, uh, hello everyone. I'm Diana Stolfa. I've been working entrepren uh, and teaching entrepreneurship, banking, and insurance and training firms in that high school on the island of Crk, Croatia, for almost. 20 years. Uh, I have a kind of a different example than Elena. This e twinning project to get involved, uh, be a social entrepreneur, is the result of a battle that our school and our teacher uh, were having with the last class of my students. They were impossible to manage, nothing interested them. Teachers couldn't work in that class, they were too loud, they didn't want to do or to work on anything. And they were mine. After two years of struggle, I came up with the idea of e-twinning project. Uh, they could work all together, divide tasks according to their interest, and show us what they can or can't do and how good they actually are. They agreed. 
So we wrote, uh, me and my uh, project uh, coordinator, we wrote a project, uh, found part partner school in Handels Akademie Einzel Klagenfurt, Austria. And the project lasted from February 2016, 2016 till February 2017. First, we agreed uh, with our project partners of the tasks and made a timeline with specific tasks for each period that was posted on eTwinning. The timeline you see uh, made uh, one of my students before I even managed to give it to someone as a task. She, had, uh, she said she had time. My class had, had 25 students and it was impossible to work in such a large group. So I divided them in two groups and formed two training firms. They have chosen economic activity according to the theme of the project, social entrepreneurship. So it was handmade products of pigs and souvenirs made of felted wool. Uh, why those activities? A lot of people in Croatia are unemployed. Many of them are in a group of difficult to hire due to their age, lack of uh, experience, outdated, uh, outdated knowledge or some disabilities. Pigs grow everywhere. Only thing you have to do is pick them up and make marmalades, cakes, dry them, make liquors or other stuff. We also have a lot of sheep on the island. No one buys sheep wool. It's been left to nature, it doesn't decompose, it doesn't burn. So it's also becoming an ecological problem. With a bit of knowledge and talent, you can make very nice things of felt and wool. So uh, the collaborative work started. First, we had to present to each other uh, our country, our town, and ourselves. Then we compared business education in Austria and Croatia. And that was the uh, first actual collaborative work that required exploration, making presentations, translating, filming it, and then uploading it on eTwinning. The next very challenging collaborative task was making survey on small and medium-sized businesses on the island and in Carinthia. For the research, they first had to agree about questions they are going to ask in a poll. They had to choose companies where they were going to carry out the interview and they had to do it in their free time. After that, they had to analyze results they got uh, and make the survey, translate it and upload it on eTwinning and then compare it with the survey of the Austrian team. At the same time, the rest of the teams were working on a logo, assortment of their training firms, they were making catalogs, posters, price lists, business cards, designing their web pages. At that time, uh, the cooperation was so good that my Austrian colleague and I decided uh, we are substituting planned online trading with international training firm fair in Klagenfurt. So on the 8th of November last year, the international training firm fair started at Handels Academy Eins in Klagenfurt. With our two training firms and our partner training firm, there were eight more training firms from Carinthia and two of them from their universities. Making and decorating stands, trading, making business contracts, negotiation, required a lot of collaborative work that took months. They also held presentations on their uh, firms in front of everybody, and they were the only ones brave enough to do that. I will show you some photos from the fair. I have to point out that all presentations, trading, negotiations were of course in English. Only few of them knew English that good. The uh, rest of them were spending their time learning and improving it so they don't embarrass their team on the fair. I must admit, they surprised, they surprised me uh, with their work, professionalism, enthusiasm, but they also surprised our headmaster that joined us in Klagenfurt because of the fact how uh, hard that class was to manage. I'd say they even surprised themselves how good they were, and they were so proud of it. The next day, uh, we had a business meeting with our project partners to review our cooperation so far 
and to define tasks we are about to do and the terms. Uh, so what we had to do next was dictionary of economy terms together with Austrian team and a research of social entrepreneurship in Croatia and in Austria and making surveys and compare them. Of course, that involved more collaborative work, dividing tasks and responsibilities and delivering the final product on each meeting. At the end, the final statements from both teams were filmed and uploaded on each meeting. But it doesn't end there. My class had more ideas of what they could do for the project. So they continued working on it without Austrian team. They uploaded the report broadcasted on a national TV. They filmed commercials for their training firms. And they also made films of process of producing their products. There uh, you have a link of the project if you want to check it and see the materials they made. At the end, I must say they learned a lot more through that project by cooperation, collaborative work, than on the regular lessons. Starting with planning actions, dividing tasks and responsibilities, team working, communication in English, interviewing, making conclusions based on inquiry, negotiations, solving unexpected problems. I was there just as a co coordinator, maybe I gave some help, but the work was theirs. They said it was the best year of their education, and despite of all hard work, problems, and headaches they were getting from the project, they would do it again. Thank you all for your attention, and if you have some questions, you can email them to me, send them to my inbox, or maybe here on chat. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ivana. Indeed, this was a great project. I admire you and also your entrepreneurship, uh, the way you ch you shared also with the uh, other teachers. Okay, great project, really fantastic. Uh, okay, there are some questions actually uh, from uh, the chat. Um, for example, uh, the question was, uh, also, another question was also about time. How do we uh, manage with time? Um, so, if anybody would like to ask to answer this question, time is uh, always too tight to mention. Yeah, Diana, how can, do you manage? Yes, I can answer that. We were working uh, out of school hours. We were working in the afternoon. We were connected on a Facebook. Sometimes even till midnight. We were uh, dealing with problems and how they're going to solve that. So you can do that uh, project uh, of this size. You can do in, in, in working hours in, in 24 minutes, in 45 minutes or, or in school. Yeah, you're right. And then another point, maybe Elena, you can uh, unmute your mic and contribute as well. Uh, Elena, um, just uh, start your webcam again. Uh, so uh, also a matter uh, uh, is a matter is also quality time. Okay, is it quantity or is it quality time? And uh, and and then uh, uh, do they have to study just because we need to finish the textbook, or are they learning and what are they learning and how are they learning? And another question that I usually of course, time is a problem for me as well. So, but when I start thinking, oh right, I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting my. I'm not wasting my students' time, uh, because uh, what are they going to remember in two weeks' time, in one month's time, or even better, what are they going to remember when they leave school, right. when they will be facing the challenges that we talked about uh, uh, later earlier on. Um, Elena? Okay, can you see me? Yeah, no, okay. you cannot. You have uh, well, to click on the webcam. I, uh, okay, just a moment. Okay, here again. Uh, okay, can you see me? Okay. There are, uh, is that okay? Can you see me? Uh, no, not yet. Click on your image first. Okay, here I am. Sorry. Okay, uh, I think uh, one of the things uh, that uh, students. Are you there? 
Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, there was a blackout. Okay, one of the things that the students should, uh, um, teachers should start to do now is a very strict planning activity. Because, uh, you know, the old style the teacher was going on with lectures and uh, at a certain moment stopping for testing. But now it's uh, very different. So um, a good point, starting point is uh, the planning. And of course, the learning designer that you presented uh, before is another helpful tool in order to be more precise with planning. But um, the other point I have to say that ICT, anyway, are really helpful because, for example, the, the project and the, the other projects I proposed to the class um, involved a very short time activity at school and a lot to do at home, um, yeah. especially because uh, we in Italy usually attend the school, especially in the morning. But uh, they can do it uh, anytime, also in, later on. And the resources are at their disposal anytime. But uh, what uh, changed uh, uh, with this uh, project-based uh, approach uh, to learning uh, is uh, that uh, they, the students are much more involved and motivated. Uh, and uh, this is a big change. Uh, they don't consider the school so boring as, as it was in the past because they have an active role. Yes. So they will surprise you. Uh, yeah, Elena and uh, Diana, can you please start your webcam again because uh, Incidentally, I did something and, and I cannot see you. Yeah, another question has to do with grammar. Thank you, Diana. Elena, click again on your image, please. Another question has to do with uh, doing grammar in the classroom and uh, integrating that with other collaborative learning activities such as PBL. Well, Elena has already answered the question to some extent. Uh, what I usually do, what I try to do, because I'm obviously we are not masters, we are just teachers, uh, is to uh, shift also that moment. So usually what we do is assigning grammar, uh, grammar exercises for homework and the kids do it by themselves. What happens or what I have experienced in my classroom is that they find it too boring or too difficult. They get stuck and they don't go on. And uh, so they, what they do, they, they create a, a classroom, a group on uh, WhatsApp, and they exchange the results of the grammar exercises, or I don't know what, uh, what they exchange there. But anyway, they don't do the homework. So what's the point in assigning homework, I ask myself. So now I am doing the opposite. We do grammar activities in the classroom, always in groups, and I go around the desks and uh, check, help, uh, uh, give some uh, scaffolding or a, um, correct, immediately improve the mistakes that they are making. The best ones help the weaker ones. And uh, the top students are also encouraged to cooperate. And uh, I assigned a different type of homework that Elena mentioned that is more creative projects, uh, multimedia projects, videos or other stuff that require a lot of time and work. So they do it for homework, at least they cannot copy that. Or oh, that is my illusion, I don't know. Okay. Um, Diana, what do you think? How do you uh, do uh, grammar in the classroom? Oh, I don't have grammar, I'm an entrepreneurship uh, teacher. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. So uh, those, Facebook, yes, those Facebook groups they're having, I'm using against them. So I give, <laughs> I give them the task they have to use Facebook groups to solve it from home. So, um, oh, yeah. yes, I actually, um, I usually let them uh, form groups uh, according to their interests because then they, uh, the, the collaborative work is, get, is better. You know, when they, when they work on the things they like, they usually do better. And yeah. not all the same, of course. Uh, we all have different interests. And entrepreneurship is a kind of a wide, uh, wide thing, you know. You, there are many other, uh, many, many fields you can find yourself in. So some are good yeah. in, in um, 
in analyzing markets. Some are good in marketing. Some of them are good in finance. So I think it's better to let them choose what part of activity they are going to do. Yeah, absolutely. And another way to deal with grammar maybe is to make it more fun. And as Elena mentioned, there are there's a wide variety of tools and digital tools and uh, gamif gamified gamification that we can use in order to do. Uh, some have been presented also. I showed you a learning apps, for example, that can be very a uh, Quizlet or other uh, polls and other tools that can be used just Kahoot was presented by Socrative uh, and other tools that can be used to, to check grammar. Um, uh, any other uh, questions from uh, from the from the audience from the uh, from the teachers? Um, don't know whether there you would like to ask anything our presenters this afternoon. Um, anyway, uh, you know the, the the we've got a chat also on the learning event. So if there is anything that does not come to your mind right now and you want to ask, uh, uh, please post a question on the chat or yeah on the learning on the forum. And uh, so if that's it, uh, I, I don't think there are any more questions. If there is anything else, Elena, that you would like to do to say before we start? Well, uh, I'd like to say just uh, try, make uh, one step uh, uh, after the other. Don't uh, try to change uh, completely things, uh, but uh, make uh, an experiment uh, for one single learning unit. Uh, you will be encouraged uh, and you will go on this way. You, you cannot uh, go back to the traditional way. This is uh, the future and uh, it's uh, really uh, something involving for both for students and for teachers. This is the way. Yeah, and let's start maybe with a small project with a few collaborative activities, not a big PBL uh, plan, yeah. the one that I showed you, which is very complex and uh, has many challenges and uh, uh, possible issues uh, integrated in it. Just start and uh, fly low, as they say, fly Nike, okay, fly Nike to win. And um, Diana, same as question to you. Is there anything else that you would like to add before leaving? Uh, well, yes. I just say that uh, we should take uh, learning out of the classroom. You know, when kids are out, especially in, in uh, subjects like banking, entrepreneurship, training firms, you have to uh, let them go out. It, it traditional way doesn't work. There. You have to face them with problems, you have to give them freedom to, to solve those problems in their own way, and then they uh, learn from their own mistakes and from the mistakes of the others. And that's the, yeah. that's the point. Yeah, and that's an add-on actually, if we can take the real world from the inside into the uh, inside of the, from outside, from inside the classroom, and uh, make it give it just some uh, meaning, more sense to our students. That would be uh, make school, as Elena said, uh, not so boring to them. There's a, such a, a shift, such a uh, wide gap between what is happening outside of our traditional classrooms and uh, and the inside, unfortunately. Okay, uh, dear uh, participants and dear speakers, we have come uh, to the end of this webinar. Let me just uh, remind you that there is one more questionnaire at the end of the learning event that we are, you are kindly invited to fill in, to complete, uh, in order to receive a certificate for this learning event. Uh, it's about closing thoughts and, good, and a goodbye. So just a few considerations, reflections on the way you are teaching now and how this learning event, event at least we hope, has uh, contributed to making a change or influenced, uh, inspired you, okay, to find new ways. Uh, again, if you are interested in uh, browsing through all the materials 
that um, were part of the original MOOC. You know that there have been two editions of this MOOC. So successful was it in less than one year. So uh, the collab MOOC that Elena uh, participated, attended, was uh, 2016 plus this uh, new second edition that finished uh, not very long ago, November, last November. But uh, although the, uh, the activities are no more moderated, so you cannot take uh, the learning uh, activities, the peer reviews and so on, all the videos and the materials are still there. You can browse through. Uh, it's free and it's online and it's uh, on the European uh, Schoolnet Academy uh, platform. OK, so you're very welcome to uh, enroll. And uh, I think uh, that's it. Viola, if you can, uh, if you just would like to say goodbye. Uh, if you want to stay in contact with me, this is uh, my teacher and uh, email. And I'm always uh, also on eTwinning. So it was a pleasure for us to be on this uh, learning event. And we really hope, what do you think, Viola, that the, the, the participants or the teachers appreciated our efforts? Because believe me, it was a lot of work, a lot of work. I, we hope so, of course, we hope so. And thank you, everybody, for being here today. For, and thanks to our speakers and our guest speakers and to you, Anna, of course, for this great fort. Yeah, OK. So uh, uh, thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording of this webinar. If there are any more questions that you would li uh, like to ask, we stay here a couple of minutes. So thank you for being here. And uh, goodbye. Happy collaborative teaching and learning in your classrooms.